Hannibal here from TheHannibalTV.com with Keith Hart, who is the one Hart we have not talked to yet this weekend, and it's a pleasure to finally meet him because when I was training at the dungeon, he wasn't around very much, uh, but he was an amateur wrestler, wrestled for the University of Saskatchewan, made it to the college finals. Uh, do you want to talk to us a little bit about your amateur career before we get into your pro career? Sure. Um, you know, was, uh, we started out wrestling when we were kids. Uh, my dad put us at the YMCA. Uh, he was on the road a lot, and there was a good, good coach there named Harold Evans. Coached a lot of good wrestlers. Uh, came out of Alberta at that time. So I wrestled for Harold Evans in, uh, as a, a six, seven, eight year old. And then uh, when I went to, uh, got out of high school, there was actually no wrestling club at our high school. So I didn't get a chance to wrestle much in high school. And then uh, I went out to U of S. My uh, is actually my third year at university. I didn't wrestle for U of U of C in Calgary, but uh, so I went to U of S. And as a, just a walk on, I had been out of school for uh, out of school wrestling for probably five or six years, and I was pretty nervous about going on because everybody had this. Um, they thought, oh, you're Stu Hart's son, you're going to be, uh, they're, they're going to tear your head off. And they, they bring out their best uh, uh, best performance for you. And, and it, was, it was pretty intimidating because I hadn't wrestled for a long time. And that, that first year back at uh, U of S, was, wrestling was really hard. And because uh, so, I, I was pretty rusty, but I came on and uh, I made the team. And I was pretty proud. I was doing it. I thought my dad. I knew he was really proud of it in Calgary. It was a good chance for me to, to get back on the mat away from the, all the fanfare of Calgary because the uh, Stampede wrestling was going st so strong there. But then the second year, did I really found my stride and, and uh, did really well. And I, I, I think had I wrestled steady right through if we had a high school team, and um, I might have gone a lot farther, but I was quite happy to, to go to the Canada Finals and... and uh, uh, I'm very proud that my dad uh, had a chance to see me wrestle and, and it just continued. And then when I got out of university, uh, it was always a condition of our employment with Stampede Wrestling that if, if you didn't go to university, they, you couldn't wrestle for Stampede. So I, I got out of university and it's like, okay, now I've, I've paid my dues, can I wrestle full time? And uh, they put me on the card, and I had to work my way through, just like uh, uh, any new boy, just uh, find my way from the bottom up. So. And at one point in time, I guess you were even uh, one of the top stars, as well as the booker for the, for the company. Yeah, you know, it was a long time ago. It seems uh, like a different lifetime. But there was a, a few guys started out with me uh, in the in the gym, same time as Gamma Singh and Ricky Martel were two notables, a guy named Art Wilderman, who was a national amateur champion, a high university champion. And we all started out together, and uh, I remember being uh, told, I never got the title or anything, but uh, uh, Bob Leonard, who was the writer for Ring Magazine back then, was, took uh, probably more pictures of wrestlers than any other man. He, he congratulated me in a ceremony for being the Ring Wrestling Magazine Rookie of the Year, the year I started. So I was like, wow, that, that was uh, pretty impressive. And, um, uh, you know, at that time, I, I was like all these other guys, hoping to uh, become a world champion, just like uh, like Harry and Harry, Dave, uh, Harry Smith, my nephew. And I had the hopes and dreams of uh, of uh, going all the way, and I remember when uh, Hulk Hogan was uh, just coming onto the scene and making the big money, and we were thinking, "Wow, if we could just make fifty thousand dollars a year as wrestlers, oh, that'd be we'd be so rich. We we'd have so, uh, so much wealth and so much riches that we wouldn't know how to spend all that money." And we were riding around in the vans and discussing about whether uh, like some guys were taking steroids or doing that it's like would it be worth it to you know, I remember with Dynamite Kid and Davy Boy and debating with them whether it was worth taking steroids to if you could make that much money or not and uh, it's kind of a fork in the road there and uh, uh, I didn't go that 
take that fork in the road, I uh, uh, I didn't get the the excess the great big body that some of the guys got and kind of stayed close to home. You ended up, I guess, becoming a firefighter. Yeah, I wrestled. Uh, so I got a publication that a guy gave me documenting all my matches. I didn't realize I, I had some like about 1,700 matches. I wrestled in, in Japan and Germany and Texas, Hawaii and a lot of different places because you, you can't stay in one territory forever. But uh, I was like, you hear some of these hockey players, venerable old hockey players, and they have a uh, thousand games. I was like, geez, I weird. That's a lot of matches, 1,700 matches. We were fighting almost every night, and uh, it, was, it was a lot of miles and a lot of uh, bumps and uh, bumps and bruises. And the training, you know, for every bump you take in the ring, you probably take a thousand, you know, uh, on the mat. In the Particularly gym. on that dungeon mat. <laughs> it was, it, it was, there wasn't too much cushion left in it, and uh, it was pretty stiff and starchy from uh, cat piss and dog piss and the animals that Stu had around the house. And it was, I was, uh, but you know, you you, uh, you pay your price, and then uh, by by the time I was getting to be about thirty, I was, I think I was, I, I blew my knee up pretty bad in about. 77 I was completely blown out and I I started realizing that I better uh, start making some other plans and I put an application in everybody at at the gym there BJ's gym was putting in uh, applications for the Calgary Fire Department whether you're uh, didn't matter who you were and there's had to be 300 guys working out there at the gym and 200 of them were trying to get on the fire department so I thought well uh, this sounds like a pretty good plan I put an application in and I got on just about on my 30th birthday and I remember uh, Bruce and I used to share a condo and I dropped him off at the uh, gas station and they were going on a trip to Regina and who knows where and I was waving goodbye to him and I was like thank god thank god I'm not doing another road trip but it was uh, the fire department was a, a, a great thing for me. I still got to wrestle the odd time when they needed somebody, and and uh, I just joined a, a different team. And you ended up having some matches for WWE. I remember definitely the Survivor Series when yeah. uh, you were teaming with your brother. Any memories of that? Oh yeah, that was, I was just talking with some of the fans about that, and uh, that was a great, great trip. Um, it was just that's about the only time I really wrestled with Owen. There's quite an age gap between Owen and me, and uh, and Brett and uh, Bruce. We were all every life was good then. We we're all healthy and happy, and uh, hadn't been any uh, tragedies that split us into kind of uh, fissured the the family structure. So it was um, it, w it was just a great chance, and my mom and dad were there and. Um, we hadn't all been to New York since we were little kids and when my dad used to take us out there because that's where he met my mom. And uh, it was a, a terrific match. The only thing, I was a little insulted when uh, Vince wanted us to go to Hartford, stop in Hartford on the way to Boston so that we could uh, sort of verify or audition to whether we were able to step in the ring or not because I'd been firefighting for a few years and, and uh, I said no I'm not gonna step in the ring and, and uh, do an audition so you can judge me or uh, and I, I wrestle my style not your style I'm j I'll just uh, wing it when we get there and uh, I refuse to get in the ring with them and with any other uh, young guys or we just stop oh, like if like we're stopping at uh, 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 a museum or something, and we just had a look around. It's like, oh, yeah, this is interesting, and yeah, no, I don't want to, I don't need to go in the ring. And a lot of people actually over the years they rate you in the top three of the brothers. I'm sure you're, you're aware of that as far as wrestling ability. Well, thanks, I appreciate that. That's nice of you to stay. I've, I've, you know, we all had different. Uh, we. We came up in a different era, each of us, and 
When I was wrestling, it was chain wrestling. I was influenced by Billy Robinson, and I started wrestling in uh, in England. I, I went to uh, uh, Lonsdale's gym in London and, and practiced with uh, some of the shooters there. And, and I had a background in shooting just from my dad, maybe more than Brett and uh, cer I, certainly more than Brett and Bruce. And Owen wrestled a lot in uh, college, so he was pretty pretty handy but um, my style of wrestling was chain wrestling and we did uh, I love to have matches with guys like Les Thornton, Billy Robinson and um, Jeff Ports, a lot of those English guys and um, it was the whole I, our whole purpose and, and the person I was trying to please was my dad who was my coach and also my boss and uh, we didn't do a lot of high spots. It didn't do any, uh, um, you know, high flying stuff off the ropes because that was was considered uh, not not realistic. So um, if you watch any old Lancashire tapes, uh, Lancashire wrestling tapes with Billy Riley or Billy Joyce and Billy Robinson, those tapes, that was exactly how we wrestled. And what we did, it all the only difference between that and a shoot would be just the amount of pressure that you applied so but it was all chain wrestling is logical somebody put a hold on you you'd, you'd figure out how to get out of it and you'd counter it he'd counter it and it was it was all give and take and uh, um, we could have people watching it and they couldn't they couldn't see, see through your work and you, you, you very seldom talked in the ring to each other and and you, you just you had a, uh, an outcome in mind for the finish, and then you had so much time, and you, you went towards that, and you, you rode the uh, response of the crowd, and you brought out the response in the crowd to uh, make them a part of the match. Now we're here, of course, for Owen Hart's induction into the George Tragos Lutz Hall of Fame tonight. Uh, how important is it to you for uh, Owen to be inducted? This is very important. Um, Owen has been, uh, first of all, you know, as as my brother and uh, he, everybody in the family regarded Owen as uh, as their favorite. He, Owen was a terrific guy. He, if you had a chance to know him, um, he was he was so much fun. But he he was a genuine guy. He played a lot of jokes, but behind that. Uh, facade of jokes and fun he, he was a very serious um, father and family man and uh, he, he was very respectful to uh, his his heritage of, of, of being Stu and Helen Hart's youngest son he, he picked up the best of every everything that we had in our family and he managed to uh, ignore the uh, some of the uh, uh, silliness or that he had, I, I thought he was uh, very humble uh, very much like my dad for humility and very much like my mother for uh, his fine sense of humor and he he didn't fall into the traps that the rest of us may have fallen into of maybe being uh, a little headstrong and arrogant but he terrific guy and he, he married his childhood sweetheart and they had a dream life and it was it was so uh, so tragic that it was cut short unnecessarily by uh, uh, I think it was a control thing to force him to do something that he didn't want to do he was against it and that's another matter that we could really get into for it's a long discussion but there was never any uh, uh, atonement or uh, they never got to the bottom of how that accident happened and his uh, his widow Martha has you know there's been some conflict there between Martha and Brett over whether Owen should be in the WWE Hall of Fame or not and uh, whether you know they it's, it was in the papers just just a little while ago, it's quite contentious, and Brett's come out, uh, uh, battled with Martha over it. But I, th I think that with uh, WWE and Vince McMahon being responsible for Owen's death, I, I think Martha is entitled as Owen's wife and uh, the keeper of Owen's legacy and the mother of Owen's children 
to um, not, uh, you know, it's up to her if she wants Owen to be in that Hall of Fame because McMahon ultimately is going to make profits out of it. It's for it's it's a uh, Hall of Fame designed for, you know, it's not just to uh, glorify Owen's legacy, but it's uh, he still hasn't atoned and, and come clean about what happened and why, and he never will. And she doesn't want him, so that's her her prerogative. But I think it's really important that Owen is given back to the fans who supported him. And this Hall of Fame here, I consider a legitimate um, shrine to the wrestlers of of the world, not just North America. And it, it, you can see there's uh, amateur wrestling, pro wrestling. It's all together, and it's it's all treated as equal. It's one big. Um, uh, sort of uh, genera. Uh, it, it's it's like uh, it, it, you know the whole sport uh, throughout. So anyway, um, I think it's good to see Owen you know, to to be put up on a pedestal here, where people can come up and uh, and and uh, see their heroes and uh, read about them and, and uh, get to know them. And I, th I think this is the place it, he belongs here. And uh, if he's never in the WWE, that's, uh, uh, that's between Martha and McMahon to work that out. And to close this off, I know you're very close with your father. Uh, do you have any thoughts uh, you could share with us about Stu? Oh uh, yeah, my dad was such a great guy. We were so, so lucky, all of us hearts and uh, all the people in Calgary to, uh, in the, in the wrestling world too, to, to be able to know on a personal basis, basis such a, uh, uh, really such a, a fine human being. He was a good role model. He was uh, he. He, he was everything that he's portrayed to be. He never pretended. He was just a straight shooter. He's um, a, a real shooter, too. You know, he, he guzzled a lot of guys in, in the older day, um, but he, in his younger day, he, uh, he'd take on all comers, and um, he'd take people, come up to the house to visit, and we had people from all over the world, from Germany, Japan, Ireland, and he'd, he'd invite him into the house for a cup of tea. Didn't matter who you were, didn't matter what race, what gender. He was very open-minded, and it was, it was just such a, a great experience to have him and my mom as as our parents. You, you just can't imagine the wonderful times we had. Well, thanks a lot for taking the time to speak with us, and congratulations on your brother going into the Hall of Fame. Thanks very much. Pleasure.